Hello, it's Renee Ewart from Tallahassee, Independence Demonstrator uh, with Stampin' Up! And today we are going to show you pillow boxes. Yay! And, and I'm Hannah with Hannah Crafted Gifts. Um, as you can see, Renee and I are not physically together, but we are still together in spirit um, doing this tutorial via Zoom. So hope you enjoy. All right, so I wanted to show you um, the item, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. And Miss Hannah will correct me if she sees that I'm off kilter or something like that. Looking good. Good? good. All right, so here it is. We're gonna do pillow, bo pillow boxes, excuse me. And I have made a little uh, basket here that I'm gonna be going ahead and demonstrating in a few days. So you can look for that video on YouTube. But today it's all about pillow boxes. And so pillow boxes can be, our pillow boxes can be any size that you like, all right? They can be big, they can be small, they can be medium, and they can be the size that Stampin' Up! sells pretty much, all right? And so this is the one we're going to make this kind of pillow box with the uh, bird ballad suite uh, materials. And as you see, my string is here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that string. And what you then find is a little card on the inside, which you can write your message on the back. So it is your little gift box. OK, Hello. Hannah, take it away. Lovely. I love that sample. It's so special. So yeah, I just wanted to show quickly, these are the pillow boxes that Stampin' Up! sells, which are fantastic. Um, you get 10 of them for less than that, um, less than $10. I can't remember the price right now, but we'll link to that below with all the other things we're using today. But I wanted to show you these because these are five by three, and that's essentially the size of the box we're going to be showing you how to make. Um, we're using a six by six sheet because, as we know, Stampin' Up! sells their DSP in either 12 by 12 or 6 by 6. So that's an easy size for you to use. And once you score it the way we're going to show you how, it roughly comes out to be this same size. So you can basically make your own version of what you could buy from Stampin' Up. Um, but these are really easy to buy and embellish if you're making lots of them. And we'll show you how to make the special version from scratch today. So Renee, why don't you start us off with what to do? Okay, so uh, basically what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to cut your 6 by 6 sheet of paper. All right, and the sheet of paper that I used is right here from the Bird Ballad paper. And um, you are then going to go ahead and score it at one ed edge, excuse me, at one edge at the quarter inch mark. And then you can go ahead and go to two seven eights on from the other side where you didn't score, if you go two seventh eighths in, you will then be at the halfway mark and score it there. Or you can simply go ahead and take your um, quarter score and just fold it over and glue. All right, Does that makes sense, Hannah? It does, and I did mine just ever so slightly differently in dimensions, um, but I like yours better, so that's probably what we'll put below. But I did a half an inch, and so if you take a half an inch off six inches, that means you're left with five and a half, so your halfway score here would be two and three quarters. Um, and so that also works, but I think with Renee's, the quarter inch, and then two and seven eighths in the middle, it would be even closer to the Stampin' Up! size. Very good. Now, did you want me to proceed or um, to proceed with the, with how to do the edges? Yeah, um, teach us how to score it because I haven't done that yet. <laughs> all right. So the scoring is pretty easy, actually. And that's the beauty of this uh, um, project. You just need a big enough plate if you have a big piece of paper um, or a small enough one if you have it smaller than this. But really, I wouldn't go much smaller in terms of six inches um, through that length there. I would not, okay, because it makes the box too skinny. All right, so anyway, so what this bowl is, if we measure this bowl uh, from the inches, it's about four and a half inches, all right? 
And so what I'm going to do then, I'm going to go ahead and fold this, and I'm gonna take my bowl, and I'm going to place it, I'm gonna do it here so you all can see, um, I'm gonna place it here right at the edge, and then go ahead and make my curve. Now, I did that wrong for some reason, I can't do it that way. <laughs> um, you want I'm it to be concave, correct, Renee? Yeah, so it's gonna go, now for some reason, I am having uh, a block. No, yeah, it's gonna be concave. So is so, it like this, like I'm showing mine, like you'd put it off the end, so that that way the curve goes like this? Right, right, I, I don't know. Yeah, so what I'm doing is, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I got confused. That's okay. <laughs> it goes like this. <laughs> Okay, good. Guess, That's what I thought. Um, I just got confused there for a second. <laughs> That's okay. It happens all the time in crafting. This is perfect because I was trying to do it backwards for y'all. But this is how it goes. Okay, so now if you look at the bowl, I have not made the bowl go all the way to the corners. Okay, so what it is, it's about an eighth of an inch off the, the he right here there is an eighth of an inch left right here and right here so that I can hit the corner. And then all I'm going to do is, I'm gonna hold that tight, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to burnish that, right? That's the word, burnish. Right, so and you I'm going to go corner to corner? Like yeah, you are, corner? you are hitting corner to corner because you didn't take the bowl all the way to the corner and you left a little eighth off. You are because of the way the tool glides around the bowl. So right. you are going corner to corner, but you do not put the bowl on those corners. And then you burnish, as you see, really well. Now you can use a bone folder. You can use a plastic knife without it being serrated, of course. Okay. So then you're going to do the other side that exact same way. Do not go all the way to the corner. Leave about an eighth away so that when you burnish, you will hit the corner again. So the bowl doesn't go to the corner, but that way right. your tool to burnish with can. Right. Okay. Thank you. There she is. <laughs> I'm getting it. It's my first time. <laughs> no, well, uh, no, I, I think... My English sometimes is a little funky. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. But you, you know, you do speak multiple languages, so that's a strength. <laughs> <laughs> so my only concern, Renee, maybe you can talk to us about this, because I imagine this might be the case for other people too. I've got a good burnish on one side, but right. it has to push through to the back side. Is that going to be okay? It has to only be, I, know, can't, I, I don't know if you can see this, but it doesn't have to be much of a burnish as long as you have the edge just slightly showing. That's why you have to push hard. Okay, I, I guess I have to push harder then because I'm seeing it on yeah. the side that I'm doing, but not on the reverse right. at all. You have to push hard. I actually push pretty deep. Okay, so you want to see it at least a little bit on the reverse. Side. Right. It, it really doesn't have to be much, but that it's visible. Let's see if that did it. If I'm strong enough. Alas, I am not. <laughs> yes, that's why. Did you see how I went back and forth and back and forth? Just use a little bit of pressure. Now, it's not a big deal if you can't because you can turn it around and do the same thing. I just, I just have a strong hand. Oh, I'm starting to get it ever so slightly. Good. Good. But if, if you couldn't, if you were weak like me, you could flip it over and just try to line it up close to the same on the other side. Right. As long as you're hitting the edges, you will be. Right. And using the same bowl, of course. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's just an eighth of an inch. Is that fine? That eighth of an inch? Does that, does that seem uh, like that is working for you? Yes. Good. This is so fun for us for the very first time we're doing it this way. And I hope you uh, enjoy this crazy video that we're making today and uh, that it helps you build all kinds of little uh, pillow boxes of any size. That's what I love about this. Certainly a good time for crafting. A lot of us have more time than usual at home. 
but this is a good safe way to still get to work together and share the community of creating. And we can go ahead now and glue those edges together. That's okay. what I would go ahead and do next. Let's go ahead and glue. And I, for edges like this, I love to use Tombow because the Tombow really seals it well and faster. So I do like to use the Tombow. My edge is gonna go on the inside of my fold. And can I say something about um, our strategy with the paper, Renee? Yes. So if you are particular like we are, <laughs> uh, you might appreciate um, taking an extra minute with your DSP to strategize where you're gonna make your cuts and where you're gonna make your seams. Um, the reason we did the quarter inch to half an inch score on the edge is so that your seam is hidden right here. You can see on my paper, this side ends with a pink, a light pink stripe, and the other side picks up with that same little bit of light pink stripe. It's hard to catch with the light, but that way it looks as if it's a continuous piece of paper. So I love when that can work out. So now um, I take, are you set? Are you okay? I'm all set. Okay, good. Now the side that isn't, oh, there's my birds. Uh, the side that isn't, um, that you did not burnish on, fold that over first. Okay. That's really easy. You'll see it just folds right over. No big deal. Just put your finger in the center and start bending it. Oh, yeah. There was more of a burnish there than it looked like there was. Yes, yes, it works. And then on the other side, go ahead and, and go ahead and fold that side. Now with these pillow boxes, a lot of times, the friction of them meeting together can keep, keeps them closed. So that little bit of friction on there will keep it closed. And just go ahead and- Oh, look at work. that. Yeah, you see? I'm so pleased it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't doubt you, but you know, sometimes you doubt yourself when you haven't done it before, and I had not done this part before. And so again, on the other side, you do the same thing. You see how nice your corners are looking? And you go ahead, and then you fold. And I always fold the one that isn't as burnished as well, just to make sure that it's all okay. So I don't... That's smart. It's a bit cleaner. It just works well, out. Better. And there's, there it is. There's that's your fantastic. Top. There's your little pillow box. Yeah, the Cutest side that was thing. burnished more because um, it was the side you were working on can kind of like hold the side that has less burnish in. Right. Now, loving the way these stripes line up. That is so fun the way that worked out with this DSP. Right in the center. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Cool. They're very nice little boxes. They really are. Fantastic. Okay. Right. So now we can stamp, I believe, correct? Yes. All right. So we've each done something different with our stamping. I used this label punch that I am forgetting the name of. So I will, of course, make sure to include that in the description below um, to punch out a little piece of Whisper White. And Renee, I think you used a circle die, correct? Yes. Uh, no, I just used a circle punch. Oh, I circle just punch. used my okay. two, and a, two and a quarter circle punch. Okay. That's all I did. And then we're both using stamps from the Free as a Bird stamp set, which goes along with that Bird Ballad DSP. Um, this stamp set and that DSP, I think, were the highest selling um, suite of the annual catalog, which only has about two months left before it's retired. Um, we don't know if this particular set will be retired or not yet. The paper certainly will. But yeah, so we each chose a sentiment. I chose the um, Your Friendship Means the World to Me. Which one did you choose, Renee? The world needs more of you. Oh, this sweet. I love these sentiments. Um, and so I'm just using the black ink. And what do you have there, Renee? Okay, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and color coordinate a little bit. And I'm going to use the Calypso Coral with this. And um, as I always do when I do my stamping, I take my pad and stamp on to the um, stamp. Um, so, and then I'm going to go ahead and put it at the top of my circle. And I've got mine all set to go now, right there. 
Um, while Renee's doing her stamping, I'll show you. I also fussy cut out the same striped DSP that I used for the box. Um, on the other side has little birdies. So Renee actually doesn't know this, but um, I did this project with her very much in mind. So I don't know which of these you want to be, Renee, but one is you and one is me. And that's why <laughs> it says friendship meets the world to me. Because <laughs> I love you and I miss you. <laughs> yes. So you want to be blue or pink? I'm going to be, oh, pink, always. Okay. Pink. You're wearing pink today, so that makes sense. So I'll be blue. <laughs> I also got some ribbon, this um, crinkled seam binding ribbon, which I'm just loving yep. because it comes in whisper white and then you can color it. So I took my stamp and write markers and colored this using the Daffodil Delight marker because that's what coordinates um, with this yellow stripe in the paper. So I'm going to use that to wrap mine up here in a minute. But I guess we yeah. can start um, adhering our pieces yeah. onto our box, correct? Undo your boxes when you do this, obviously. Lay them flat so that you can do this. And I am going to glue my The World Needs More of You and then place my birds on top of the circle uh, uh, and uh, go ahead. I, I am using um, some of the Calypso Coral ribbon. That is the ribbon I've been using. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that. Now, when I glue things that I wanna make sure get centered well, I use my liquid Tombow here that uh, is the blue colored one. Yeah, that's a little more forgiving so you can move things around a little bit. Yeah, it allows you to make sure that you're centered and that everything is good. And I almost put it on the wrong side, which I do not want to do. I want it on this side, obviously. There you go, this is the side. And I'm using dimensionals on mine, um, my uh, sentiment and my birds. Yeah making sure it's centered. Yes, my birds are gonna go on. I too have two birds and uh, they are going to go, they get glued. The one gets glued on. And okay, I've got a little kitty coming in the screen. Sorry to interrupt you there, Renee, but. <laughs> Uh, we get our kitty. Someone's coming for the birds. <laughs> Did we get our kitty? I will use a dimensional for the other bird that goes on top, the one I did lay flat, but I will use a dimensional for this guy. Now, if you notice on my second guy, uh, my second guy, I call him my second bird, the feet are missing. But that's because I'm not going to see the feet anyway. So there's really no need. So when I cut, fussy cut this guy out. That's good, save some time. Yes. I'm getting my box popped back together because I've got my pieces adhered to the front. Um, and so I'm just gonna work on tying this up with ribbon. And because of where I wanted to place my birds, so it sort of looked like we were looking at one another, <laughs> um, it ended up a little off center, even though my label is centered. This bird was a little more over to the side. So I'm just gonna make sure when I tie this up, the bow for my ribbon goes over here, just to kind of balance the whole thing out. So I'm hoping I cut my ribbon long enough. We're about to find out. So now I'm gonna start gluing the feathers down that I had fussy cut out. And you saw with my DSP, the, the the other side of this DSP are the feathers and so I fussy cut some feathers out and the feathers go underneath the bird and I just put a little piece of glue my my glue didn't work on this one let's see let's get him down again here this looks like a little bit of a heart here there it is that's better there's another one. And you can arrange your feathers really any way you like. As you can see here, that one I didn't glue yet down, but I will. And then here we'll go another feather. Looks like my ribbon was just long enough. What a relief. <laughs> Stick this down one more here. So you see all those feathers. 
and that other feather got actually stuck down there, so that's not bad. Let me see if I can't move that feather over a little bit. I'm going to use my pick tool, which comes in handy sometimes to move things. I just ordered one of those. I'm so excited to get it. Did you really, Hannah? I did. I was tired of trying to, you know, my fingers weren't picking up those little things like they used to, I guess. I don't know. So I'm really looking forward to that. And here comes Chandler. Is Chandler in there again? I'm going to take my last one. He sure is. He's coming for the birds. <laughs> so I'll show mine. I was even, and this was not even planned. I'm so pleased when these things work out. My yellow ribbon is sitting right on top of a yellow stripe in the paper. Yay! So, so Renee, I, this okay. is for you. Inspired by, instructed by, and made for you. You'll be getting this soon. Oh, how sweet! <laughs> Thanks for showing me how to make it. <laughs> oh, how great! And uh, this is uh, mine. And you see how I, I just glued down the feathers, but they're, they're not all the way glued down. They're just, their ends are glued down. And you can see how you, I didn't have to cut all the feet because the feet get hidden. And these two guys are looking at each other. Uh, and you can see that um, coloring. Now, real quick, um, just to explain uh, this part, because I do like how this works. Obviously, in the um, free as a bird stamp set, you do have this stamp and this stamp. And so I took a card that is about four inches by two and a half inches, all right? And I punched a hole. You can use your pick tool. You can use a hole punch, uh, anything you like to punch your hole, and then to tie that ribbon on. And of course, the crinkled uh, ribbon is just perfect. It's beautiful ribbon. I do have that also, and I have my uh, Calypso coral. And then go ahead and use your little pick tool or a little punch, any kind of needle nose punch, punch out two holes, and then you can put your earrings in, or if you have a necklace, maybe you can put a hole up here um, a little bit higher and then hang the necklace from there. You can string the, the necklace piece, uh, the chain through the hole, whatever you like. And so it just simply fits into your box and you don't have to have, you don't have to wrap the ribbon, but you can have it at the top, which works really well. Yeah, and they know see. they have something to pull out of there as a surprise. That's just lovely. Right. I'm just trying right. to get Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I was trying to get Chandler, who keeps getting his backside in the video, to pose. If he's going to be in the video, he might as well pose with the project, but he wasn't <laughs> going for it. So we'll just, we'll keep seeing parts of him here. But um, I think we're all set, right? So we can come back on and say our goodbyes. Yes. All right. Yes. I hope you enjoy these. I hope you make these. I think they will be great in an Easter basket. I even have a small Easter basket as a little uh, holder for one of these for someone special. And you can send it in the email, or you can send it in mail, you know, if, if you need to. So that can always go in the mail that way uh, if you cannot be with your loved one at this time that you would like to share something with. Well, why don't you come on back on, um, tilt your camera up so we can see you. We'll get a shot of us with our projects and then we'll say our goodbyes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Bye-bye now. <laughs> Thanks for watching and happy crafting.